Welcome back, everyone, to Old World Blues, the A to Z series, in which I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover. <laughs> um, but regardless, uh, we're here playing as the NCR. We have the Baja Blues, which are at last time. We could choose Ranger Mossman goes with Campbell support, <clears throat> or we go with Mayor, Mayor Hayes, or organized development. Now, I'm not sure which way we should still go, but I want to go with Ranger Mossman just because Rangers lead the way. I like that a lot. Um, then again, we have the elections in about two years, and, uh, ooh, look at these guys. Not as good as I'd like, but whatever. Um, actually, can we? Let's compare them real quick first. And see our Rangers, 6 combat width, or 6 12. 12 6 battalions, 12 combat width, anti tank, recon, and these NCR Rangers, 2. Yeah, anti tank, recon. Not bad, but still. Beep. 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 Oh. You know what? Since we got that, uh, come over here, too. Regardless, um, with the election up coming up, uh, we'll see what happens. But we're doing the Congress of Baja, which we read last time. Um, which one do we want? We will see which way we go. We are still trying to get as much technology done as possible. That's ahead of time, but whatever. I'm not super worried about that. Let's get some gliders, shall we? Yes, we shall. And we're still working on getting rid of our local leaders. So we can get some better stuff here, too. I read this one, I think, last time, too. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, we did this one last time as well, as well as Boston Mojave deployments. Now, I'm going to maximize this as fast as we can. Um, Eastward Ho. Ooh, that's still be pretty good to do, too. We must exploit the connection across the divide to unite the Mojave in the heart of the Republic. Can you imagine how awful it would be if we were dependent on the Long 15? That'd be pretty bad. But I think we'll do this one next, just because we get the extra compliance, and it's not a big deal for us since we're the NCR, but getting extra compliance so we can have less resistance is always a good idea. We got about eight days left, and then should the member of one, yeah, joins in their war, and then we can go to war with these guys too, which would be great. As the world's killing itself, but that's pretty normal. Doesn't matter what timeline. Good. Look at all that army XP. Oh boy, I like it. I like it a lot. So we got that going. We got a lot of research going. Scrap bots, vehicles are okay. Dynamite. I think that's the way we need to go. We gotta be a little more explosive. Go down here next, and hopefully, eventually. Um, but let's go with Switch Forces and uh, Switch Forces. Look at that PP. I love the PP. Oh. Whatever. Yep. They don't start attacking us? What's wrong with them? Uh, sure, sure, no. Scavengers Triumph. Hey, Arcjet Systems. That's cool. Cassin Jet Bomber Manufacturer. Ooh, that'd be great, but let's not get him yet. We don't have any cast yet to really work with. But we will soon. Just from Y, uh, War Sport, please. Got a little bit of money here. Manual Prospectors. Keep going with our technology and whatnot. That'd be great. You know, we're gonna help out just for funsies. Head down here. And head down there. That'll be fine. Ah, uh, looks like our infantry is actually doing okay, finally. Head in, so hopefully you can encircle them. Ah, uh, would you look at that? I don't know if Special Force is gonna struggle more, but that's alright. Eastward Ho. Um, getting two levels of outposts. That's not bad. I would help them out too. But we're gonna go with this one next. Bolster Mojave deployments. Because we can. We're gonna go with Life Giver, and we're gonna go with Inspirational. They're already level four. We're gonna go with Local Leader, so I can throw you guys here too. Yay! Yay! We don't need a giant army. We just need a good army. Plan building more labs. Uh, yes, please. Now we're doing a uh, metal mouth. Declare a permanent state of emergency. During a national emergency, the Republic's constitution grants the president almost unlimited authority over the matters of the state to ensure the Republic's survival. With the Congress in disarray and border regions close to open revolt, it seems time to invoke the provision. Oh. That's cool. Political power it is. We're going to do everything to help our allies but us. Kind of. -ish. Well, honestly. We don't really need healing powder. I don't think we'll need it for this campaign, which is rare, but we actually have manpower, so. One of the rare times I'm not actually going to take chemical companies and whatnot. 
And we're out of money again. But what else is new? We have the man power, just no money. What's it mean in real life? So if you're in about uh, thinking metal, please go right ahead. Ro robots. Our intro could use some help. It, it really could. Boop. Let them go on. We're doing fine. Boom, boom, boom. Help them out. Kill them off. Yay, 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 yay. You guys. Uh, Big Jim. He's going to be another field commander. Oh, crap. That's really bad. Fine, we'll do that one too then. Uh, Threads of Life? Sure. Mm. Hills, mountains, deserts. We're going to go hills and mountains. Fire standardization. Happy January, everybody. Let's get some more output. That'd be nice. Uh, can you do your job? There you go. Thank you. Go ahead, Rangers. Look at that. Beautiful. Can you guys win here by yourself? Maybe, maybe not. Expeditionary research. Very good. Um, urban assault specialist. Patrols. Admiral Do Doherty. Finest seaman. No? Bears Paul. Whatever our differences with the she, the economy is crucial to the New California. <clears throat> Rather than concern ourselves with the domestic affairs, we should work with San Francisco's movers and sh shakers. Now would you look at that? It's very nice. Fine, you guys can upload too if you really want. Like, fine, fine, fine. There's a political power a little bit, but that's right. Hey, overall political guide, fantastic. Fine scientist, yes. And we'll have this done and take care of. No problem. No problemo. Bear's honey pop. San Francisco has no choice but to work with the NCR. Who are they going to sell the goods to otherwise? We can profit from this to build a firm relationship. Bear defense, great. Press captures bandito plans. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and spend army training too. Might as well. Beep. Beep. I wouldn't mind if we could fight like the Legion, oh, not the Legion, but the Brotherhood right now. I think we'd be okay ish. Support equipment and radios. We're gonna need a lot of radios. Right. Um, let's get Archest Systems. Something unique for us. Are we there yet? Keep going, keep going. Hey, Bears Honey Pop. Crush the Rising Dragon. The Shion and the new leader rallied to conquer California. We must strike to preserve a great nation and secure rear when we fight the Legion. Yeah, seriously. So that's the case. Are you guys allied? It's a chapter, but they're not allied. Which is good. You guys go here. Boop. You guys, good luck. Boop. Ooh, actually, what, why'd I do that? What the barnacles am I doing? Honestly. They can do it like that too, whatever. Beep, beep, beep. Thank you for your Mexican ships. Alright. Level 4, I'm okay with that. You're gonna be a local leader and a lot giver as well. Other than that, I guess. Be aware, but let me when we get there. Table warfare is good. Boop, 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 boop. That'll be okay. Beep and pop. We need more command power too. We need more war support in general. How is this looking? Oh, it's looking all right. 
more shady sands and build up da 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 greater day glow from the node from the node the hub oh do you not begin a rider yet wow Woo. boneyard uh sack city Choice for now. Needs the world understand the world around it. Human needs evolve. Human supremacy. We're gonna see about that for now. Beep and boop. Crush rising dragon. The Baja Homestead app. Some claim Baja is just an endless desert. But there's some beautiful places along the coast, cool by the Pacific breeze. We could easily settle them. Followed with lessons of the Baal campaign. Fight down south, thought as much about desert warfare and outrunning supply line. Good training for the March on Flagstaff. Uh, I thought we were supposed to get cores here, but maybe not. Oh, this is it. Of course, all on-card states which we own in Baal. That'd be great. Battle of Hoover Dam. Savages will be repelled for the Republic. Hoover Dam stretches across the mighty Colorado. Has become the battleground between two vast forces today. On direct orders from Khazar, the Malpais selected himself as leading a massive force of legionaries and tribal auxiliaries in an attempt to seize the so-called old, old World Wall from the hands of the New California Republic, who have held it since the 2274 Treaty of New Vegas. The Legion, aided by superior numbers and fierce obedience to orders, seems to have the upper hand in the clash, but will need to carry out any momentum it gains from breaking through at the dam to secure it from counterattack. If they should succeed, the Mojave and the lights of Vegas will lay open for Khazar to grab. Should they fail? The Mopai Saga may find himself in a difficult spot, and the NCR will retain their hold on the Mojave for a little while longer. The savages will be repelled for the Republic. It better hold. It did hold. Mighty foe defeated for now. Goodbye, Mopai Saga. Goodbye. I'm really enjoying our fruit punch right now, too. Woo! Alright. You know, before we do that... Boop. I'm not going to say very much, but whatever. Troopers? Uh, let me throw another one on there. Makes them just a wee bit tougher. Just a wee bit. Go in. They attack us? No? Good. Okay. Beep, beep, pop. Where are you at? You're there too. Okay. See what you can do. Especially you four. Nice. See what happens. Uh, sure. No, yes. Oh, good. That division died. Just like these divisions will die too. Good. And they have power armor there too. Look at that. That's way to get rid of enemy power armor. Good. Uh, going through here. And just keep pushing. Helping out our own backyard. Yep. Should be to the gods. Plant more buildings. Boop, boop, boop. Research department. Bring more signs. Thinking metal, special forces integration. Good. Oh, they had no one here, so they just walked over. Okay. Fantastic. Pledge victory to the people. The Mojave campaign has dragged on for far too long, and our people are beginning to lose hope that the conflict will ever be resolved. We must restore their faith. The Mojave campaign. Defeating the Legion of the Dam was the, but the first step. Despite the defeat, we're facing an unending guerrilla war and raids across the mighty Colorado, but at least this costs the Legion as much as us. War never changes. Oh boy. Well, those guys are gonna die. Yay! Um, we're gonna send two over there to just get more science points right now, anyways. It's pretty nice. This is not so nice, but everything else is. No, we're good. Boop. Boop. Best one of government. Mayor Hayes is still standing up for the common man of the California dream. In contrast to Murphy's position, or populism, and Kimball's nationalism, Hayes campaigns for a different government that works. As he puts it in his campaign declaration, the Republic is like a meat fruit pie. Murphy tried to take a share of your neighbor's pie. Kimball will take someone else's pie, but we can, by working together, simply make more. Technology made our ancestors the richest, strongest people on the planet, and so can do so again. Murphy's role in the vote of no confidence has played a role in his support, and the Republic gears up for one of its tough elections today. Who will win, the man with the plan or the architect of the Mojave? Let Kaiser the she mock the mob rule of California. Let Vault City judge the protesters and rally the company elections. 
People of California know that, that for all its problems, there is nothing wrong with California that cannot be cured by what is right with California. And the White Sun's greatest nation prepares to choose a man to carry them forward. Campbell in California. Hayes earned support in Dayglo by promoting infrastructure development and earned support in Dayglo by promoting court reform. Countdown Election Day. NCR your election maps are accessible under miscellaneous tabs up top. I hope both candidates have fun. Happy days with Hayes. I hope both candidates have fun. Campbell in California. Truth be told, this would be fun. Hayes would be fun. Hmm. NCO not allow technocrats in Los Angeles to hold back our nation's progress. Or. But there's another way we can go too, besides these two, technically. Ooh, sophisticated air tech would be nice. Land doctrine. There is another. Go down here. Put down the revanchists. Electro deadlock. More try to stop Murphy. Secure. No checks and balances. You waste on tanks. Junker troop, huh? Operation Black Cobra. Anti tank weaponry, huh? True culprits of chaos. Steel hearts. Lost bunker changed by negative forty two thousand basically. Wow. The mother of California. Compliance law is pretty good. It's not bad, it's not great, really. Enemies of the state. Sophisticated special forces or higher granite company. Recruit a population. That's really strong. Sophisticated power armor tech. So basically, we want to try to go this way. Butcher of the North. We go a happy day with Hayes. We can go with Kimball. Kimball's pretty generic. Mora is kind of unique. Let's save just in case, which I already did, though, but whatever. We'll campaign for Hayes and let's, let's try to get Electoral Deadlock. Let's see what happens. So, where is it? Map of elections. Oh, God. So, Hayes has Dayglo, San Diego, Aaron Kimball. So these are the electors and whatnot. Interesting map. Uh, how do I close it? I see this red. There he is. Hayes campaigns. So he campaigns across the great nation and will boost support depending on what he does. Hayes challenges the Brotherhood. Who are the Brotherhood to say that we can and cannot do? We beat the Master and Enclave. Do you think, do you think they're any stronger? They also gain support of Maxim. Hayes pushes for schools on Shady Sands. Oh, that's pretty good. Hayes approaches Eureka. Hayes will court Eureka's mercenaries to guard Redding's interests. By hiring mercs from Eureka to deal with her agents in the Northern Reaches, Hayes will gain support in Redding. Hayes visits Dayglo. I visited Dayglo and a promise to bring more power will win support. Why should there only be a radioactive one? Or why should their only glow be a radioactive one? The bear's going to the moon. What better sign of California's recovery than space flight? We aren't going to meet our ancestor standards. We're going to surpass them. Small but widespread movement will support Hayes in every state. Countdown election day. The winner of the election is whoever controls the greatest number of states. But should no candidate have the majority of states behind him, the consequences will be drastic. Fate of democracy. Let's do all three. Let's see what happens. Boost foreign policy. Ooh. Divert power from the Mojave to bridge the gap. President Kimball announced we worked on a plan to construct a railway through the divide, connecting the Mojave directly to the Republic. Yeah, we'll see what happens. If we don't get what we want, it's fine. It's, I'm not super upset. I like all these different paths anyway, so. So then, direct aid of the campaign. I'm sending untrained personnel and funds to equip them as far from sufficient to properly defend the Mojave. 
We need to send men and equipment aboard to stand any chance of successfully annexing the Mojave in good time. While we're trying to deal with all this crap here, too. Here, the only way I make it easier is if I actually get you guys to come up here, too. Producer PP, yes. Okay. Just destroy their entire army, basically. Very nice. Good job, guys. Yay! Now we don't have to deal with them. Backstabbing us. Hopefully. That's a big hopefully. Freedom's non negotiable. The Habologists have suffered from religious persecution for far too long. While well, I question their beliefs, there's no reason for them to face discrimination and harassment in San Francisco. And send in the Rangers. Whatever flaws in Navarro, the she now runs the lands of the Imperial Fiefdom. We must send the Rangers to do battle against the Poles of old. And I guess success. Oh. Oh, wow. We have to wait for this one. Okay, so then we're done with all that stuff for now. Um. Gym drills. Requires a bear's roar. Production cost is not really a big deal. Old world armor is not bad either. And then you also have this one down here. State of the Disunion. You could do that, but we could. It's another path. Colorado's finest. Uh, diversified weapons contracts. Our friends in Reno. We do friends in Reno too. Hmm. Inaugural dress. It was once a time when the NCR army could meet every problem with a large enough company of men and women with rifles and light gear. If this wasn't already an antiquated idea by the turn of the 23rd century, our humiliation by the Brotherhood made it abundantly clear. Our military needs further modernizing. The proper incentive of our arms industry partners could uh, aid us in the process. Scammers find nothing. Get out of my office. Because right now we want to get another field commander. Well, god dang it. We need way more. Holy crap. Ooh. What we have will work for now, but still. That ain't great. Um, I don't think we go to war anyone else right now. Send direct aid. Five plane fighters, good. Political guides, rangers, fire teams are nice, troopers, that'd be good, good. Hey, we got San Francisco back too, that's awesome. Welcome aboard San Francisco. Boop. And... Boop. Oh, you're a little 10-node? No, better than Shady Sands. God dang. Combine arms training. Nice. Keep going with it. Keep going. Feels like I've done this before. I've literally said this before. Like, when I've played, I think, the NCR last time, every time I said, like, this feels familiar. It's almost like deja vu. Every time I play this. Hmm. I play this too much, probably. Uh, how about our guys? The Crimson Caravan Routes. Cementing control over the divide has been invaluable. But now we can fund a true caravan route between the Mojave and NCR. No longer will supply lines be dependent on random caravan groups. Come on now. Good. So we'll end up in a civil war against the Legion as well. That would really suck. Thinking metal. Human hands are not enough. Maybe more creative AI could help. Yeah, absolutely. So we need to increase that there. Ooh. That'll be fine. Day glow. What do we got here? Any increase? No. Increase? Oh, yes. Pretty good. The hub. Yes. Boneyard. Nice. Good stuff. The hub. Good. Destruction Mount Rushmore. That sucks. How dare they? New superiority? Sure. Sure. And plan building more labs. Ooh, I completely forgot about this. So, what, what's that function map look like? Uh, so how do you know if you're really winning or not? All eyes in four ways. Well, the NCR has begun to fully take on the mantle of a truly Californian republic, a royal has grown to consolidate most of southern Oregon. Both nations, with their slowly growing empires, have focused on four ways as a potential source of economic support. A natural juncture for traders travel from Oregon and California. Four ways provide safe harbor for weary souls, taking a generous cut in the process. Despite their mass wealth, four ways is being slowly torn in two directions, towards a powerful NCR in the south and the upside of royal in the north. The NCR will prevail. You bet it will. Bet your britches it will. Eh, it's not bad, not great. Uh, heavy power armor. I like that. Shock troopers. I like that too. Should you go over the Legion? 
That'd be good too. Friends in Reno first. With the emergence of New Vegas Strip as a competitor in the previous years and the signing of the Treaty of New Vegas, more and more tourists are now pouring away from the lawless Reno to Vegas, a perfectly preserved city protected by the ever-vigilant Securitrons. Even now, secure, Reno's economy is crumbling under its own weight, and Mr. Bishop is aware of the shift of power in Nevada. We can offer to bail out New Reno, provided they align with the Republic. Um, so in the competition for domination over four ways. There are two paths available to us first. As to the building coercion, which will eventually result in a military campaign against our target, this will, of course, enrage our comp competition, as well as a possible provoke provocation of some level of military response. A more peaceful but perhaps less satisfying route can be taken through gaining influence in Four Ways Merchant Guild. Whichever power holds a higher level of influence over Four Ways will have the upper hand in negotiations, allowing them to force their opposition into accepting disadvantageous agreements. Influence, influence, incursion. Bribe the guards. Strong influence. Begin aggressive negotiations. Gain influence. Secure the border. Gain coercion. Tyrant grip on them. Build bombs in four ways. Nope. We're going military. Militaristic. Having 49 divisions up here might be a bit too much, in my opinion, but we'll see. Friends of Reno. One of the cornerstones of the NCR is the free movement of people and goods between its states. The Fargo Traders Investment Reading has the latest of many investments that are knitting California together. That is dream of rebuilding the old world. These are ties. These ties are proof that we shall make a new one. Peace is good for business. As for the Sierra Army Depot. After a bailout of the economy, perhaps the Friends of Reno will pay back with kindness and grant us access to the Sierra Army Depot. in four ways. Unpopular genius. Germans has years of experience which to back up his appointment and it shows in his capacity for planning, both in speed and brilliance. However, he's unpopular among the people and his appointment will weaken the Republic standing. No, that's not good. Negative two, huh? Maybe a lot of coercion. Hey, this campaign out. What's going on? Sure. The old world base. In the time since the chosen ones, disarmament at Sierra Armada Depot's defenses, New Reno's foolish had taken little interest in the facility. In contrast, our military intelligence has indicated that the site still holds great amounts of pre war hardware as well as research conducted by the American government after converting the munitions base to facilitate experimental weapon development. With the greater leverage we've established over New Reno's economy, an opportunity to get our hands on the basic contents has presented itself. The question now is how to attempt this. Hawks and Aaron Campbell's cabinet say we need to secure the perimeter surrounding the site. This would allow us to develop the territory and provide the base with greater protection, however. This would essentially mean the outright annexation of New Reno territory. The president's more method methodical uh, advice suggests taking a subtler approach. Requesting the establishment of a military garrison at the base under a lease that provide the NCR rights to its own resources. As we respect Nerino's independence and leave nominal ownership of the land in their hands, making it an offer they'd be much more willing, willing to accept. Let's attack our grip over Reno, but forego further our, furthering our larger military ambitions in Nevada. What should our approach be? Only annexation of the base is acceptable. Propose a lease. 
We're taking all of it. Chop shop. Hmm. Open up the Navarro Reservation. Far too long, Tanny sympathy for travel stood in the way of progress. Tanny placed restrictions on the rights of tribesmen, saying they could not buy or sell property like every other citizen. Why shouldn't we let them sell the land if they wish? They can use the funds to acquire the accruements of civilized life from Reading's merchants. Our Sierra, our Sierra Army Depot. The families in Reno saw a reason turned over the Sierra Army Depot to the Republic. Perhaps it's a sign we should trust them after all. They make great territory one day soon. Yeah, look at that, man. Freaking fantastic. Dollar, this is a scare package, it's no power. Uh, help settlements out, sure, why not? Strip of the war, the four was attacked. Our best efforts at resolving the four way situation diplomatically seem to have failed as a nation we hope to core has now been ruthlessly attacked by our counterparts. Well, this isn't what we hope for, direct military response is unlikely. Many of our people already see this as a needless source of attention, and we'll probably just be glad to see it over with. However, this bellicosity, bellicosity has a range of military, and our generals are currently drafting plans to undermine the enemy advance. We'll show them. Hopefully with overwhelming numbers. And of course, special forces. Sure, come on in. We need that war support. Sure, why not, too? Just trying to get over the river. Come on. You get over here, that'd be great. You cut these divisions off, kill them off, open up Navarro Reservation. Tame Frontier. Our attempts at bring civilization to Navarro is a booming success. With the arrival of modern medicine and electricity, thousands flock to the newly tamed frontier for a new chance of life. Draw control? That's fine. Boop. Come on, I know we're losing a lot of guys, but still. Fate of democracy, and so the people that NCR have, uh, through the centers to as a new president, who shall be? Grants, Grand Slam. Or, oh, looks like the battle is confusing. Um. The electoral deadlock in the NCR at first many waited, and with great enthusiasm and unease for the results of the ongoing election in the new California Republic, this would be announced. It had seemed as though all certainty had vanished, save for the tacit understanding that the destiny of the Republic would be enshrined, and the will of the people would be recognized as it always had been. <clears throat> oh, let's get this team going. Give me some freaking planes here. And yet, as the election drew on, great and terrible sense of trepidation began to dominate the general character of California. The general anxiety was horrible, and over the desert loomed a specter of imminent and physical danger. Night swept by, and the apprehension became a source of public nuisance for those who pretended to sleep. Each day, the sin of bickering and votes shifted like desert sands in the wind. Still, the majority inevitably failed to manifest, and the bickering continued. As the time passed, it became abundantly clear that the NCR had, for the first time in its history, faced absolute dictatorial electoral deadlock. Our public may be swallowed by strife. New California democracy had never been perfect and prone to bombs along the road now. However, our democracy lies in complete chaos. No single candidate can gain a majority from the Senate. Frantic negotiations are underway. No single presidential candidate has been able to gather support of the Senate majority, despite days of intense negotiation following election day. No constitutional provision exists for the situation, and without a strong judicial wing to decide on the result, the NCR is facing constitutional collapse. Aaron Kimball's lame duck address. A clear victory is still not forthcoming, and now a majority of the NCR's comp component, or component states are threatening secession from the Republic in the face of an absent national leadership. Without a new president, the office remains but a lame duck. If Congress can't resolve the mess, it's his duty to do it, for the good of the Republic. The aforementioned event will have the following effects. Oh, good God. I don't understand how they mu we must have a debuff here or something. Yeah, this makes literally no sense why we can't win here now. So you're going to stop, because you, you freaking suck. And you freaking suck as well. I do not understand why you are so bad at this. They literally have, like, one division. 
you're gonna stay here so you can get over the frickin waterway it's so stupid so incredibly stupid but Grancy Hayes was not having a good day at first. Not only was he slated with exactly the same amount of votes as attacks while attacks Will Kimball and the free man Stooge Algood, we now have been informed that due to electoral imbalance, the election was now at a deadlock of first in NCR history. So it makes a bad day slightly better. Hayes was had a secretary take the week off, but one of his many advisors was in charge until further notice and began leaving town. Although that being the mayor of Daglow was a very boring and tedious job, he had learned of a very important development while sitting in the council meeting. Apparently a go up and caught wearing Enclave gear. I was pleading with this case that he found a pre-war enclave bunker, stacked to the brim of the valuables, giving each member a crude map of how to get to it. Hayes, while having an interest in following up on the matter, was outvoted by the rest of the council, who had the ghoul committed to the old ghoul's home. Now, however, with a failed election, he could take off some time and relax, let the insolent fools deal with their election, he had, he had a bunker to find. Once he reached his spot, he stepped out of the mayoral Corvega Blitz and began reopening the door to the bunker. Once open, he discovered the bunker's rather misleading name for the complex. It may as well have been a pre-war army depot. The complex was massive, with a holographic directory listing up five floors, each with over a dozen rooms. Hayes was glad he was given his, sta his staff time off. He may be here for weeks, if not months. Hayes set up a base camp on the first floor, preparing him for the long exploration ahead. While Hayes is on his expedition, he won't be able to perform his political duties as an advisor. President of necessity. Congress grew hushed in silence as Aaron Kimball neared the podium. For 30 days since the election, the Senate had been unable to agree to a new president. For 30 days, Aaron Kimball had clung to power. Every senator knew he was a lame duck and doomed to be replaced. No senator knew who the replacement would be. Senators, we find ourselves in a crisis never seen before by our fair republic. Corruption and hunger for power have tainted this Congress. I render him unable to elect a new president to lead the republic forward. For 30 days, you've been deliberated without success. Deals have been struck and abandoned. Dirty money has run amok. The senators shudder. They shudder not because they minded being called corrupt or hungry for power. They all knew most of Congress for both. Instead, they shudder because they realized what, as one, what his next words would be and why they, they had summoned them. They shudder for they knew what his next words. Kimball was rolling the dice one last time. We must have a president without one. Unrest grows in our towns and cities, our states, and territories. Our enemies across the way, and within our borders, have already begun plotting against us in a moment of weakness. I cannot let that happen. A deathly silence is sent over the chamber. By the power vested in me by Congress, I remain the president of the Republic until a fresh election can be held and a new candidate agreed. Chaos. The states will not stand for this. Constitutional uncertainty, huh? Treason, treason. Declare a permanent state of emergency. Recall federal troopers. Aaron Kimball dies. Oh, God. Um, a state of emergency is declared allowing the executive to broadly bypass the will or lack of thereof of Congress. This unlocks a variety of advisors, focuses on other actions that Congress would otherwise forbid. During a national emergency, the Co Republic's Constitution grants the President almost unlimited authority over the matters of the state to ensure the Republic's survival. With the Congress in disarray and border regions close to open revolt, it seems time to invoke the provision. Can we just win this war first? God dang it. Don't these guys leave. These guys in here. Come on. Let's go. Let's finish off the frickin' war. Robco. Well, we don't need Robco, definitely. There we go. Cannot let them leave or move. You're going to force the attack. They are going to literally die here, like the bastards they are. Why can we do this one? Oh, we need vacuum tubes. Oh, probably should research more stuff. Cool. Recall federal troopers. The NCR's federal military is well equipped and excellently trained, but totally reliant, totally reliant on the local states to provide it with the supply and reinforce it with the National Guard units. With the prospect of a rebellion from almost every single state, these things can no longer be relied on, and so that the military must be recalled to Shady Sands. Besides, it may prove handy to depose local governors should the need come. And in the meantime, we're going to promote the nub. The nub? The hub. Oh, we've got these point where he is. Shady Sands, great. Can we promote any more? Okay. And. Thank God. This was a pain in the ass. They lost about 1,500. Well, they lost 4,000, so. Better than humans? JM302 would be great. Brains will always be brawn. Better, strongest, faster, better soldiers. Yeah, that's definitely better. I always go that one. Nice. And we got him. My apologies for being a little upset with this, but whatever. Uh, so in the meantime, let the world collapse around us. You guys can go to Shitty Sands, too. Boop, boop. We don't have enough war support, but whatever. Train. <sighs> oh, this probably screw up everything we have here. New research department? Yeah. Treason, treason. Redacted. A knock at the door, the aforementioned event will have the following effects. Ooh. 
President's been assassinated, but by whom? Nobody's sure, and everyone's panicking. Constitution collapses. Imminent. Heavy troopers. Elite Ranger teams. All good stuff. Boop. Let's wear them all. Guys, there's legions down here, and then there's Tucson. Good luck, Mojave territories. You're gonna absolutely need it. Collapse, collapse, collapse. The knock at the door. Who could it be? Major. Oh, Cassandra Moore. Was in Shady Sands when the fateful day arrived. She'd been reassigned to oversee the Shady Sands garrison just days after the election of the authority uh, on the authority of General Jim Marshall. For reasons she didn't at first understand, as such. She'd seen firsthand the Republic's rapid slide into chaos. A Senate in disarray. A president trying to hold back the inevitable in days of agonizing paralysis. To the crisis seemed yet like another symptom of the Republic's flawed democracy, one that was becoming increasingly in need of dramatic changes to save. The president was still in power and some legitimacy remained, so she kept order on the streets as best she could. There was a knock at the door uh, of her windowless office, and interrupting her quiet musings, it was a man she recognized well, Ranger General Mossman, covered in scorch marks and flanked by two rangers from the 32nd. Good evening, Major Moore. It appears we have a bit of a situation, he spoke quiet quickly. With his characteristic charm all but gone, Moore realized something had gone wrong. It should be General Marshall, not him. Before she could question him, Mossman continued, a meeting of the war cabinet was attacked not but ten minutes ago. A bomb contained in a briefcase set under the table. Detonated during the meeting, the president, cabinet, and military high commander fine pace across the wall, and I was only saved by the hefty table leg that sat between me and it. Crap more thought, crap, 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 Mossman, though, pressed on. With the presumed death of General Marshall, you are now the highest ranking officer of the army as I am of the Ranger Corps. We need to work a way out forward. And fast. Who planted the bomb that killed the president and his war cabinet? Why was Mossman himself the only one to spare a messy death? Why was Moore reassigned by the marshal to lead the garrison, not yet invited to the meeting? Questions abound, and yet few answers presented themselves. Without a solution, fat and fast, chaos is, is inevitable. How about that? The Committee for National Security. With the death of Kimball, the last fragment of authority in the Republic shattered. Now, not even a lame duck president remains to command the army or issue emergency proclamations. Our Congress has proven itself unable to find a solution, and with threats from abroad and within looming ever larger, drastic action must be taken. The Committee for National Security, formed from the leaderships of all branches of the armed forces alongside senior civil servants, must take over. You know, front. Who needed weekly stability or a political power game? The Committee for the National Security, composed of elements of the military and civil service, will assume national leadership in the absence of either a president or functioning Congress. We're sure not having a good time here, but that's by choice and plan. Yeah, we can have a new systems care package, why not? Power armor frame, we'll get there eventually. Boop, boop. Hey, O'Brien, welcome aboard, you're ours. You know, raise you to the ground. A united front. Well, Moore and Mossman have worked over time to begin the, uh, keeping order. Oh, hello. Uh, to keep order in Shady Sands after the assassination of the president and his war cabinet, the Republic is rapidly falling apart. Faith and democracy held up strong while there was a president in power, but in the war that has followed the assassination, the Republic's enemies have been swift at seeing, seeing opportunity. Without a president, they muse, there will be no president to order the deployment of divisions to counter their raids. The recent probing attacks have probably proven their theory, and raider violence has blossomed across the Republic. The Senate, meanwhile, has continued to be paralyzed by indecision, and in the face of the president's assassinations and ever-growing chaos, they've fallen flat. Enough is enough. At 9.04 a.m., ranger and army units moved in a sink, in sync to occupy key buildings across Shady Sands within minutes. The Senate, Presidential Palace, and radio transmitters have not been occupied. Ten minutes later, an unnamed civil servant broadcast a statement over the waste, and the Committee for National Security had to assume the powers of the President until the Senate can elect a new leader. While the precise members of the committee are officially anonymous, most know the committee to be an alliance between the senior military and civilian officials. The sense of unity in the face of adversity seems uh, reassuring to the people of Shady Sands. That after all, they're doing their necessary uh, until the Senate can elect a new President, right? We must unify to overcome the crisis. Move political void. Oh, good. Let's take a look-see. Hey! Committee for National Security. In the absence of a president or a functioning Congress, the Committee for National Security has been formed. Comprised of a hodgepodge mix of military leaders and civil servants, the committee is promising an end to the crisis gripping the Republican shady sands. Critics worry this is just the start of a slide into authoritarianism. Declare martial law. Wait, so more try to stop Murphy. Murphy most foul. Suspend the Constitution. The Republic's Constitution, written by Eridesh and Tandy, is built on good intentions. Recent events have, however, proven it's not infallible. 
For the good of the Republic, we must temporarily suspend until such a time can be rewritten to properly prepare the nation for emergencies such as ours. Oh, there goes to New Vegas. Starting compliance. Uh, just several times. Max factory in the state. Declare martial law. Citizens in settlements and cities across the state have taken to the streets to protest what they see as undemocratic takeover of power by the committee from the Congress. Clearly, these agitators must be on the same payroll as senators and can't be allowed to pose a threat to the committee's restoration of the Republic. Federal troops and rangers will be used to enforce martial law, temporarily abating the threat of a mass uprising and bringing a form of stability back to the Republic. Oh, I should have done this a while ago. Oh well. Suspend the Constitution? Who would have do such a thing? We would. Oh, so the focus tree completely changes so you don't see everyone else's stuff. Oh, that's kind of nice. Thank you, devs. The Old World Blues devs are just fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Um, Operation Nightwing. Or Nightwatch. Congress, twisted by corruption and plotting the Republic's demise, will never pose a threat to the Republic again. Not even the Congress is safe from the attacks from our foes. We must dissolve the Senate for its own protection. The Committee for National Security has received intelligence and suggesting that the entire NCR Congress is actively working to subvert the Republic. The Committee has thus ordered the th 32nd Ranger Division to neutralize the threat through whatever means necessary. Congress, twisted by corruption and plotting the Republic's demise, will never pose a threat to the Republic again or in the fire, fire in the halls of Congress. At 3 a.m., a voice cried out, Fire, fire, Congress is on fire. Great pillars of flame roared up into the night, engulfing the being heart of the Republic in an orange glow. Not even Congress is safe from the attacks of our foes. We must dissolve the Senate for its own protection. Murphy must foul. I'm not sure which way we should go. The Enabling Act. Hey, it sounds like uh, Germany in the 30s. But down the Revanche, it's a great march. I don't know. I, I assume left would be go left side here. The NCR Senate betrayed us. Then the governors and the state guard betrayed us. Now the final band of traitors has revealed itself. General Mossman is Ranger Corps. We've been able to persuade most of his bands of foot soldiers by acting quickly. But when he put down Mossman's Ranger Corps once and for all, we're to scare future rule. Hmm. Murphy most fell. Murphy's death at the hand of the Rangers is a dark day for the Republic and for all mankind. But remember Dharma's teachings. Many six can be broken and a bundle cannot. Neutralizing. I want to see what that does first. Ah, look at all the police here. Beep. Bone your deployment. Not very much. Not very good, but whatever. And the prospectors. Let's see what we can do. Pursuit. Persecute the anarchists. You can never trust followers, union organizers, or journalists who criticize their fair republic. While they're helpful tools in the hands of the previous administration, it's time to protect our board with the enemies from the enemies within, one at a time. Thanks to the number of acts of Congress, the NCR's president enjoys extensive executive powers to which they can employ unilaterally to fulfill their agenda. They have often a useful tool to allow presidents to respond to crises. Sure. Screw it, why not? Admiral, to fall silent, if you're about this, please go right ahead. Concerning. Additional planning's nice. Go ahead of time. Uh -huh. More output, please. Operation Night Watch. Enabling Act. Chaos around the Republic. Senators. Media hacks. Brahmin barons. Everyone stands in opposition to the Republic's community. Let us pass a law to remedy the distress of the people in California. A law that should give the Committee of National Security the power to override the Constitution as necessary. With the stroke of a pen, the Committee for National Security dissolves the Republic's federal system in favor of a central rule under shady sands. No longer shall corruption and dissent hold back the salvation of the Republic. We shall guide the people alone. Chaos in the NCR. Oh, Mossman becomes ruler really, really for the Ranger Party. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe I'll choose the wrong route. I like that other focus. But we're going to pass the Enabling Act. Because nothing bad ever happened when we pass the Enabling Act, right? A is looking a little thick. Urbanization's nice. Oh, we're putting pretty nice, too. And. Chaos in the NCR. Sparked by. Oh, look at this guy. Uh, inconclusive Senate and presidential election earlier. 
in the year, the NCR has been thrown into complete chaos as a coup has been launched against a crippled Senate. Led by members of the military and civil service, the coup's ringleaders has declared a committee for national security, citing the need for political instability in the face of the Republic's many internal and external foes. While initially promising fresh elections, hope for a return to democracy evaporated after they signed a the law that allowed to remedy the distress of people in California. The decree effectively abolishes the federal foundations of the NCR's centralizing power in Shady Sands. The governments of Bilbon, Yardegla, and Redding were quick to denounce the decree as illegitimate and labeled the committee's ascension to power as little more than a military coup. But if the Republic is to survive, perhaps the time has come for a leader. The states must be brought to heel. Boop. And to the Republic for which it stands, we are in crisis. Out of the chaotic assassination. Uh, the president's war cabinet, Mossman, ascension as chairman of the committee for the national security to fill the political vacuum, came as a relief to many across the republic. It seems the chaos was over, and sooner a new president would be elected. But others wondered why the Rangers should run the nation. Murphy and the followers that led protests for human rights and reports of legion spies among the demonstrators only proved their pacifists cannot be trusted. Latest intercepts of the communiques made it clear: <clears throat> Murphy was conspiring to overthrow the committee. Mossman had no choice but to act. But Moore was unconvinced. Arrest of the governor of the Bonier might only inflame the opposition. What to do? Change California way. Moore tries to warn Murphy. Moore's failure. So, oh, look at this. All good, Murphy. And there's us. Moore's failure. Despite our best efforts, Mossman's Rangers tried to arrest Murphy. But <clears throat> all they managed to do was kill him and several of the Boneyard's leaders. The Boneyard's known hands of the fanatics who want to level all the Republic has accomplished in the name of unity. And Mossman is the one who set the ablaze. Now the anarchists of the Boneyard are radically behind a follower. Well, that's a problem. Ah, oh, Bill Calhoun. The Knight does a service rifle. Ah. It was 1.38 a.m. and all was quiet by the Ranger headquarters. Nestled among the military quarter of the Shady Sands, HQ served as a primary training, housing, and administrative hub for the entire corps. At his heart sat Ranger General Mossman, caught in deep thought as he mused over the events of the past few weeks. Alongside more, he had done what was necessary to contain the ongoing crisis, that much he knew for certain. She was quick to come up with ideas, and effective at getting the job done, yet something about her didn't sit quite right with Mossman. She was effective, sure, but she was almost too good. Every decision she made was quick and blunt, as if according not to a decision, but instead to a plan. The thought troubled him. Why was she, of all people, re-signed to Shady Sands shortly after the election? Why? At her face... Contorted in concern when only when he mentioned the gruesome end of the military high command, but not when he had mentioned to the president. He paused and willing to follow the questions to the conclusion. Had she given the order for the Senate to be abruptly ended, blindsided the committee and his rangers? Suddenly, masses of streaks of bullets rang out throughout the night, still night, inking Mossman out of sots. He ran to the window which overlooked the courtyard, nothing? Then in front of his eyes a blinding flash of the main gate. The headquarters piercing alarm switched on as Mossman watches the two great steel gates collapse inwards amidst a cloud of smoke. A second later, figures poured into the floodlight. Courtyard clad in brown sand trooper gear, the armor of the Baja veterans freshly redeployed two days ago at Moore's behest. Mossman turned, grabbing his two 10mm pistols from his desk as all hell broke loose in the courtyard. If he could just reach the barracks, he might get organized a successful defense before Moore's troopers could capitalize on his surprise. Cursor, was she behind it all or merely seizing the opportunity? He ran out of his office and down the stairs. I must rally the troops and bring her to justice, he thought. It was too late. Troopers burst through the stairwell entrance as it was half a flight of stairs away from them. All they found when they hit his office was an unidentifiable and scarred corpse decorated with Mossman's armor and dog tags with a gunshot to the temple. Mossman needed to go, lest he seize power himself. Dissolve the committee. With her enemies crushing under her heel and position as the President General secured, Moore turned against the committee. A ragtag group of military and civil officers or officials have all had their own agendas and they rarely agreed on anything of substance. Seeing as nothing more than petty bureaucracy, she drafted the new presidential decree disbanding the committee entirely. The committee members will now act as the advisors, overseeing the colossal administration of the NCR and securing the NCR. There's no turning back now. This is cool. While Moore now holds a shitty sense under her iron grip, the same cannot be said about the other territories of the NCR. Disloyal rangers still refuse to take orders from the president general and men of resistance accuse our president general of being a power-hungry dictator. A few happy accidents that will silence these dissidents once and for all. No checks and balances, huh? Destroys our political power game. Oh, we can say more. Weekly stability goes up, but more weekly wars pour. Moore does not blink, does not hesitate. Her ranger instincts have made her into the sort of to strike hard, fast, and without mercy. She can see threats before they emerge and have a can have a battle plan ready before they can strike. Nice. All right, so he's an innovator, major Abbott tactician. Ooh, it's not bad. Ranger, at least war hero. All mentioned American badass on core territory. 
or Recon Commander. Well, this is probably one we want to get. Do you know what makes a good leader private? The ability to hit a target in any weather and keep your rifle clean? No more, no less. For too many, Richard Lawrence was the last thing they never saw. His skills saw him rise from a gutter-born bastard to a leader of the 1st Recon Battalion and beyond. James Big Jim Marshall. Ooh, Special Force Capacity, capacity Multiplier goes down. Big Jim knows how, knows how to succeed in war and succeed quick, overwhelming display of force. As such, his appointment as Chief of the Army will result in increase in conscription and mobilization efficiency. We'll do that anyways for funsies. Cultural Advisors, Hearts and Minds and Ears. Uh, we can still have Old World Blues. Oh. Huh. Power Broker. Promising Follower. There you go. Well, we are here. Go and become all the troopers, because we're gonna need quite a few of the troopers, but you guys can come over here too. Nope. I'll let take over these guys too, that sucks. We're in a civil war, we can do that, go home. Nice. Save real quick, see what happens. Because I've never done an NCR, oh, as so far as I remember, I've never done an NCR civil war, but I could be wrong about that. They have a couple more militia, which is good to see. There was ever only one. The Committee for National Security was originally created to be an act as a co-equal, temporary executive body to assume the powers of the NCR president until a new one could be elected. Of course, it didn't last that way for long. Instead, it became an instrument uh, to represent the uneasy alliance between Moore's Army and Mossman's Rangers as they both sought to quell growing unrest. Neither saw eye to eye, but both knew without such an alliance, California would fall into a true civil war, and as such, a committee became less of a debating chamber of equals and more of a place for Moore and Mossman to hammer out acceptable compromises. With the framing and elimination of Mossman, and Moore enjoying credit from her newfound victories on the, all fronts, the committee is entirely under Moore's thumb. By proclaiming her gen, president general, reflecting her unified leadership of the civilian and military aspects of the state, we can mark an end of Mossman's weak norm morality and start a new, strong California. A California dedicated to reclaiming what was lost through whatever means necessary. A California where none question their leader, and all are prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice to defend California's natural land. Under Colonel Moore, California may yet be saved. NCR of gum now, the California state. And we're nice in a darker shade. Ah, oh, beautiful. Who needs stability? Is that war sports is what we need? The Bastion of Liberty. The South divided between the followers of Moore's militarists, many forgot about writing. And why not? The NCR had ignored the riches of the North for years, leaving it to develop it on its own. But whereas the Mojave was a war zone, the Navarro was an untamed frontier. Writing had blossomed into a thriving town, a town where he could start as a caravan guard and end up as a king, or where he could lose a fortune in a saloon. Not a land of gold mines and monsters above mutes of farmers, not a land where every man's a king, but a land where no man was. Not every ranger or surviving congressman supported more Mossman, not every person who believed in freedom joined the mob of the Boneyard. Some fled to Reading, the last free state in the Republic. And the country's ro roads took them to a new home away from war. Well, these bloody barons for Flynn and freedom. God dang it. Is it possible for us to just focus on California? California. These guys just split up too, I thought, as well. Because I, I just want to focus on the people in the north. I really just want to focus on oh, the south. Really just want to focus on, on them in the south. Um, keep the riders, keep these guys around too. I'm not using motorized in this campaign, spec cops no. Experiment for vermin. Oh my god. Moore looked over the state of Junktown. In the past century, it was first visited by the Vault Dweller. The town had become rather infamous for its reputation, with the popularity of tales of a Junktown jerky vendor representing the town as a place where greed and violence were met with equal violence. While the reality of the town wasn't very far off, however, while Gizmo's influence on the town remained, the Darkwater family retained power, though after the town became part of the state of Shady, this Darkwater's frontier justice was instead exchanged for the prospect of prison and judicial justice. The Junktown jail, once a small tin shack for drunks and would-be miscreants, had long since transformed into the Junktown Detention Center, a place where the ne'er-do-wells of shady and neighboring states were housed when Maxec became too full or the crimes it committed were either political or absolutely heinous in nature. 
The man Moore was looking for was said to be guilty of both, but Moore knew that the NCR had always been too soft when it came to the treatment of infidels when it came to the rule of law. Not to mention that she needed trained and capable military generals, and the man who should still be here fit that exactly. Roger, known as Rat Boy, was an offset of figure in the Mojave campaign. With his battalion, the NCR exiles, operating shortly after the Peterson administration was declared retaliation for the Mojave murders. Although he was praised by Brahmin barons and the gun renders alike for his exception of performance of quick action, unknown to most of the citizenry of the NCR, he got his results to what would be called horrific scenes of mass murder. Though his target largely remained within raiders and violent tribals, after 15 years of extermination, his vigor was taken away from him when the gen then general, uh, Aaron Kimball, completed the pacification of the Mojave in the Bullhead City. Shortly after, the full extent of the violence was revealed. No shrink for a fink. Rat boy, angry at his hopeful position being stolen, staged a confrontation with the president-elect in his office. Though after jumping and almost assaulting the man, was placed in the JDC in 2273. Since then, he had uh, remained there waiting for any updates on his sentence. Although he was initially set to serve for life, at the age of 47, his military service earned him a dishonorable discharge while he would be set to, re to be reformed within the JDC, though with orders to transfer him to Maxsec if he got too rowdy. Roger's attempted at rehabilitation was mostly person-to-person, uh, -person, with a designated therapist meeting uh, with him. Though his stories of war, extermination, and taste for violence earned him a reputation for going through approximately a dozen therapists per month, including short-circuiting uh, Miss Nanny brought in, which resulted in the additional murders of a half-dozen prison staff, however. Um, as uh, Miss Nanny caused it, and not right, Roger, he was unable to be transferred as of yet. Despite his reputation, the JDC continued functioning, albeit with a hastily constructed maximum security cell made to accommodate the man. This cell was one of the few left unopened after the NCR's electoral deadlock was announced, with many of the low and medium security prisoners let go. The guards hoped that by leaving the maximum security prisoners to rot, they would do the nation a service. But Moore didn't want Roger to waste, nor any of the exiles who were imprisoned with him. Using an electric, electronic lockpick she had obtained from the new, now former Mayor Warden Darkwater, she opened the maximum security cells. Grizzled faces looked up at her, still wearing the NCR military outfits they had been wearing since being first imprisoned. Clean yourselves up. You can offer valuable service to our nation. Very nice. Hazed and confused. Well, he finally did it. It had taken months, but Grand C. Hayes had finally explored the whole of the complex. He started on the first floor, opening up crate after crate, unlocking locker after locker, while most of it was weapons and armor storage. He did come across some interesting cybernetics. The second floor was far more interesting, seemingly the hub of the base's defense mechanisms, though long deactivated. <clears throat> Computers were also wiped, only offering basic terminal functions for the unpowered robot husks. The third floor was most boring, only offering a measly greenhouse and food storage area, which Hayes came to be grateful for, only having a few weeks' worth of food uh, stored in his car, but was otherwise unremarkable. The fourth floor seemed to have a storage area for genetic mutation testing, though, like the second floor, all logs were wiped and all potential experimentation equipment taken away, leaving only signs and reminders. The fifth floor was the officer's quarters, and while it did have a terminal, it only told Hayes what he had come to already guess already and that the complex was being abandoned. But it was uncertain if the time frame of the abandonment was before the Great War or during the Enclave and CR War. Satisfied with his work, Hayes ventured out of the bunker for the first time in months. His already pale skin had somehow become even more pale, uh, giving a slight burning sensation when exposed, when exposed to the sun. Hints of stubble and hair also pocketed Hayes' face. Uh, he had bought essentials, but luxuries like a razor were not available to him in the bunker. However, the most intriguing thing was the seat of his car or rather the lack of it. In place was a tall signboard of a woman's face on it. The poster was deep red and black, with a big red letter saying the luxury of stagnant diplomacy is over. Now with black and red stars adorning the corners. He swore he recognized the woman from somewhere, though he also had admit she did look, look particularly attractive. Although he was annoyed with his being his car removed, he was curious of what happened to the NCR since he had been gone. Just a few different things, you know. Um, so. And so Hayes began the long trek back home to Dayglow. Confused with the fate of the country, Hayes becomes available as an advisor once again. California seems pretty thick. California West, I should say, it looks pretty thick compared to where it should be. But, you know, whatever. I'll forget the support. Okay, so. California's crumbling into chaos and a war is a matter of time. But, in the interim, Bel Calhoun, Cassandra Moore, and Anton Flynn will prepare for the coming struggle. And what of the Mojave Territory right now prevails there? We go to, go to war with them. Okay, that makes sense. Proof country management? Sh sure. Fine scientists? Sure. NCR economy? Raise the budget. Um, hey, the fifth research slot. That's pretty nice. Here the NCR, no checks and balances, that's right. We're gonna believe in checks and balances here, apparently. 
Is it usually a four-way civil war? Ah, flag for the new state. Ooh. The Republic has fallen, so something new has risen on its wreckage, throwing off a stagnant democracy. All symbols cannot be used for a new state. Something new is needed. Something that symbolizes... Let's see. Strength. Unity. Power. Two bears high-fiving. I like strength. I like the dark one. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, it seems pretty nice. So secure the NCR. And then we've got to go to war, basically. Uh, the next best one we should choose. Dealing with the barons. Junk resistance. Junk town resistance. Well, probably Brave Sons of California, just so that we can get some organization so our divisions work really well. The average NCR. Uh, soldiers have always had a reputation as so-called cannon fodder, sent to die without proper training. But I will personally make sure that my soldiers keep up with the legionaries, physically and, of course, mentally. Um, so we'll go with that one next. Just because I think it'd be for the best. Or what would happen if we hired Granite Company, you know? Ranger Alliance. I mean, that's pretty good, too. But... Sophisticated power armor? I'm a sucker for that. Look at all that manpower we don't have now. Let's give the NCR. Brave Sons. Yeah. It's not ideal. Because I'm going to just send you up here to help defend. You know what? Just go do that. Go low. Just You're literally just here to defend and hold the line. Roger, rat boy. That's unique. I like it. Reverend Assault Specialist. Um, you're level 3. Go with Life for now. And... Go local leader. It's fine. So you're just going to defend there. Literally just sit there as we're taking out everyone else. Um, I might actually split you 10 off here too. Just because I need someone to hold the line there as well. Plastic explosives, very nice, very nice. All these guys are dead first, absolutely first. Can't believe they got all that from us. Um, yeah, those just any bonuses would be nice. Then building more labs, that's good. Optimized training. Ah, so now we're at war. It looks like. Happy August 1st, everybody. 2278. Are we at war with everybody? No, just us and California in the way, huh? Cool. Do we have any of the field marshals here? Cassandra Moore will lead personally. Um, anything unique? Cold personality. Cool. Beat the living crap out of them when we can. But I think I'll end it there, because this will be a good place for us to start and push it in and see what happens. So, I've never done this before, so we're in new territory, for, at least for me. And there's Anton Flynn. So, if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we'll try to figure out our way through restoring California. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.